Okay, so we're going to have re Lisa read uh, from some, some of her notes. Um, one thing I liked Dr. Griffin saying was uh, we don't have cells and bells here. We move about when it's appropriate to move. Um, she was very, very deliberate with that. Um, the, the walls have been moved, so the, the cell is no longer there. I thought that was really nice. Um, they had a, a really, about a three different kind of, um, um, three different programs that achieved 3,000 math, Excel, and learning upgrade, and I thought all three of those those technology programs were something I wanted to look at later. Um, that that interested me. Um, from Lexiles to kids that are way below grade level, they had found useful resources for those students. Um, the school wasn't all the good kids. It was a lottery-based. Um, they picked from a hat and you got in. They did have special needs children. They had um, quite a few ELL students. That was interesting. Um, so while you're looking, I'll butt in to say uh, I, I did notice uh, that, uh, like you, the, the various uh, technology uh, implementations that uh, they, they, the, really that they were looking at to help get kids, uh, place kids in the right place instructionally. Uh, so they really weren't about every ninth grader starting in the same place. They, they used the tools of technology uh, to be able to assess students uh, diagnostically, find out where they are, and get kids in the right place for the instructions, one, uh, for the right instruction. One of the comments that she made, uh, one of the comments that, that she made was uh, related specifically uh, to that. And uh, it was, it was, uh, let me see. Well, whenever a kid shows mastery, they move on. There's, you know, there's no, we don't, we don't worry about grade level, we don't worry about time. And then, you know, the other, the other interesting thing is how the school is consciously connected to the community. And the students are being taught the importance of interacting and connecting with the community through their internship program and also giving back. Um, which, uh, for a school like that, um, in an urban area, um, is um, a really interesting um, approach because you don't normally think of um, schools that actively involved and have community that actively involved. And I thought it was very interesting that they had a diagnostic assessment that aligns students' interests with specific pathways at the edits uh, assessment, I believe they called it. And then there was the the, um, uh, the Lexile levels. So they would assign articles to students based on their Lexile levels. And that was really exciting. You know, sometimes I think our teachers feel like we're putting things on them that's new or that's unique. But one of the things that she talked about was the standards space, um, the focus. Uh, in terms of, of taking a close look at that. And she talked about standard space rubrics and redemption opportunities, which is essential when we say that students need more opportunities to gain credit or to learn or to understand a concept that they're struggling with. You give them, you give them the opportunity until they achieve mastery. So. Yeah. I, I like the Summer Bridge program that she is, had started this year with both ninth and 10th grade, but it'll be a ninth oh, yeah. incoming ninth grade thing where they spend a week, they, they learn how to respect and build those relationships that we know if kids don't have a relationship with their teacher, they're not going to do as well as if they have a, a strong and healthy relationship with that individual. They do an, an in interest inventory, which gives them an idea of where their strengths lie and what direction they may want to go. And then finding those pathway options. They give them that first beginnings of this is what this pathway would do. This is, these are your strengths. Have you thought about that? I think that's an excellent way to start high school. Um, just to find out more about the student instead of what his test scores were. You yeah, know, you know yeah. the whole student, not just a piece of them. And it was particularly interesting that they were starting those students down these pathways as they began ninth grade. Uh, rather than, than, than further on. The, uh, the, the interest surveys and, and uh, the learning style surveys that they were doing, I thought it was also particularly interesting that as they, uh, as they were delivering these, it was not a teacher that was administering that, but rather the students uh, teaching uh, other students about uh, interest surveys and, and uh, actually, right, right. 
and she said their activity period we were seeing today that what they were in their <coughs> seventh week of school, sixth or seventh week of school, that all of their activity period had been focused relationship based, getting to know themselves, getting to know each other, and how to interact with each other. Which, you know, she continued to talk about how the relationship piece was critical um, to, you know, you're not going to teach a kid anything if the kid doesn't have a relationship and an understanding of the teacher and thinks the teacher knows a little something about them. And then the other thing is um, the end of separating English and history. Um, you know, they have humanities one, which is the ninth grade class, and humanities two, which is the tenth grade class, and it's, you know, complete integration of, uh, of English, language arts, um, with histories as well as other social sciences. Yeah, we, we